the last video we had discussed about research methods in cognitive psychology in this video we are going to discuss about the research areas of cognitive psychology in cognitive psychology we have many domains of research or you can say many research areas like cognitive neuroscience perception thinking and concept formation attention representation of knowledge consciousness memory imagery language developmental psychology pattern recognition and human and artificial intelligence so in this video i am going to discuss all these research areas one by one let us first start with cognitive neuroscience it is very interesting to know that only within the past few years cognitive psychologists and cognitive neuroscientists have formed a close working relationship and this union has produced some of the most provocative developments in the study of our mental character also cognitive psychologists are seeking neurological explanation for their findings and neuroscientists are turning to cognitive psychologists to explain observations made in their laboratories every part of the cognitive process from sensation to memory is supported by basic electrochemical process taking place in the brain and nervous system so this is in brief about research in cognitive neuroscience area now we will discuss about next research area that is perception as we all know the branch of psychology is directly involved with the detection and interpretation of sensory stimuli which is called perception from experiments in perception we have a good understanding of the sensitivity of the human organism to sensory signals and more important to cognitive psychology of the way we interpret sensory signals the experimental study of perception has uh, helped identify many of the parts of this process however the study of perception alone doesn't adequately account for the expected performance and other cognitive systems are involved including pattern recognition attention consciousness and memory now let us discuss about the next research area that is pattern recognition and environmental stimuli rarely are perceived as single sensory events they usually are perceived as part of more meaningful pattern the things we sense that include seeing hearing feeling tasting or smelling are almost always part of a complex pattern of a sensory stimuli think about the problem of reading reading is a complex effort in which the reader is required to form a meaningful pattern from an otherwise meaningless array of lines and curves by organizing the stimuli that make up letters and words the reader may then access meaning from his or her memory the entire process takes place in a fraction of a second and considering all the neuro anatomical and cognitive systems involved is performed daily by all sorts of people is really wondrous next we'll discuss about attention although we are information gathering creatures it is very evident that under normal circumstances we are also highly selective in the amount and type of information to which we attend our capacity to process information seems to be limited to two levels first is sensory and second is cognitive if too many sensory clues are imposed upon us at any given time we can become overloaded if we try to process too many events in memory we can become overloaded which may cause a breakdown in the performance all of us have felt the same way at one time or another next research area of cognitive psychology is consciousness you must have heard about consciousness this is very common terminology many researchers worldwide are working on consciousness so what is consciousness consciousness is defined as the current awareness of external or internal circumstances rejected as being unscientific by the behaviorist the word consciousness and the concept it represent simply did not fade away for most people consciousness and unconscious thoughts such as you might have on a first date are very real for example when you glance at your watch while studying and it reads 10:42 pm you are conscious or aware of what of that external signal however your reading of the time also brings up another conscious thought one that was initially activated by reading the time but is from inside that conscious thought might be it's getting late i would better finish this chapter and go to bed consciousness has gained new respectability recently and now is a concept studied seriously in modern cognitive psychology next is memory memory and perception work together the information available to us
comes from our perception short term memory and long term memory and uh, most obvious long term storage is knowledge of the language so we draw words from long term memory and more or less use them correctly in a fleeting second we are able to recall information about an event of years before such information does not come from an immediate perceptual experience it is stored along with a vast number of other facts in the long term memory now we'll talk about representation of knowledge this is also one of the domain of research in cognitive psychology as we all know fundamental of all human cognition is the representation of knowledge how information is symbolized and combined with the things stored in the brain this part of cognition has two aspects one is the conceptual representation of knowledge in mind and other is the way the brain stores and processes information so the conceptual representation in different individuals can be considerably different in spite of these inherent dissimilarities between representation of knowledge most human do experience and depict experience in similar enough ways to get along well in the world the content of this information is also usually different but our neurological web and traps information and experiences and holds them in a structure that are similar in all human brains next domain is imagery cognitive psychologists are especially interested in the topic of internal representation of knowledge so the mental images of the environment are formed in the form of a cognitive map which is a type of internal representation of the juxtaposed buildings streets street signs sport lights and so on from the cognitive maps we are able to draw out significant cues although the experimental study of mental imagery is relatively new to psychology some significant research has recently been reported now we will talk about language one form of the knowledge shared by all human societies is the knowledge of language language is the principal means by which we acquire and express knowledge the study of how language is used is a central concern of cognitive psychology human language development represents a unique kind of abstraction which is basic to cognition language processing is an important component of information processing and storage so language also influences perception a fundamental aspect of cognition next field is developmental psychology developmental psychology is another important area of cognitive psychology that has been intensely studied recent studies and theories in developmental cognitive psychology have greatly expanded our understanding of how cognitive structures develop as adults we have all lived through childhood and adolescence and we share maturational experiences with all members of our species next area is thinking and concept formation thinking is the crown jewel of cognition thinking is the process by which a new mental representation is formed through the transformation of information advances in cognitive psychology have led to a formidable arsenal of research techniques and theoretical models an ability to think and form concept is uh, an important aspect of cognition similar concepts help in the understanding and processing of information and uh, there is considerable body of uh, knowledge about the laws and process of concept formation the last domain of uh, research in cognitive psychology is human and artificial intelligence nowadays we all are hearing about uh, artificial intelligence ai websites ai tools evolving research including human and artificial intelligence so in this slide we'll uh, talk briefly about human and artificial intelligence human intelligence includes the ability to acquire recall and use knowledge to understand concrete and abstract concepts and the relationships among objects and ideas to understand a language to follow instructions to convert verbal descriptions into actions and to behave according to the rules and to use knowledge in a meaningful way the specialty within the computer science called artificial intelligence has had a major influence on the development of cognitive science especially since the design of programs requires a knowledge of how we process information cognitive psychology also addresses to find out whether a perfect robot can simulate human behavior or not so in this video we talked about uh, domains or research areas in cognitive psychology if you have listened to the entire video this video might be useful for you to pursue your career in one of the domains 
of cognitive psychology if you are interested in cognitive psychology if you have not listened to the full video you can replay the video and get a brief description about each and every domains of cognitive psychology see you in the next video with a new topic till then bye bye take care